Hey there, uh, it's Stephen Lin. I'm actually here because I want to introduce you to the banjo. I'm doing this because there's a former student of mine in another state um, who was interested in picking up the banjo. I'm an elementary school teacher and administrator. And um, recently, uh, this student uh, said that he'd like to learn the banjo a little bit. I play the claw hammer style. We'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. Um, but this, I figured I would create a video just to introduce, you know, the basics to a banjo. So this is a banjo right here. What I have here is a 1979 Epiphone. It's one that has a resonator. That's what the shiny plate around the back of the banjo is. I play a claw hammer style uh, on the banjo, which is actually not what you typically find with this type of banjo. This is what you would find with a you know, uh, an Earl Scruggs three-finger picking sort of style, generally. Um, my style with the claw hammer is something you would find with an open back banjo. That's the kind of banjo that wouldn't have a solid wood uh, piece on the back. It would just be hollow. What you find here in the pot, this is basically a drum. And with an open back banjo, you basically have a drum. You have kind of a tension stick inside and you have this neck with all these frets and then the tuners on the at the very end so uh, so I am going to show uh, you uh, the basics of claw hammer banjo although I am using a bluegrass style three finger picking sort of banjo or at least the kind that you see with that kind of style so anyways um, like I said a banjo is essentially a drum uh, and a neck here uh, with frets. The first thing that we want to do with any banjo is to simply tune it. So a banjo has five strings, guitars have six. Uh, you will actually find that there are some banjos with four strings, uh, but the majority of banjos that are played have five strings. You have, starting from the bottom, uh, the first string, second string, going up to the third, fourth, and then what we call a drone string at the top. This one you actually don't really use your fingers to uh, to play up. Um, you're really just using that as kind of a drum string to help keep beat, add to the rhythm, things like that. So let's talk about the um, let's talk about tuning. So what I have found really useful is to get yourself a tuner that you could clip onto a banjo like this okay so I've clipped it on right here and um, long story short the uh, vibrations of the instrument will will resonate into this tuner and it will tell you what note you've just played so I'm going to play the first string here Let's see if we could get a little bit closer and that's a D Okay, and I'll tell you that it's, it's a D. It's kind of hard to tell on this um, primitive video here. You might be able to see it. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, that's a D. Okay, and uh, I'm, I'm using an Adario tuner. I think you could use this on a guitar. I might be wrong, but um, I believe you can. Um, okay. And that first, in, that first string should be a D. Here we go. The second string, oh, by the way, well, well, we'll talk about tuning in just a moment. The second string should be a B. Okay. The third string, the middle one, should, should be a G. And by the way, if you see it red, that means it is just barely a G. It actually needs to be fine-tuned a little bit. Here, your fourth string is a D. And then that drone string at the top, the fifth string, should be a G. Okay? This is what we call open tuning. There are other ways to tune your banjo, uh, and it helps you with playing different kinds of songs. But uh, as far as beginners go, uh, we'll start with an open G chord. This is a G chord right here when you play all of them together. So here we go. The top, oh, sorry, the first string is supposed to be a D. I'm going to fine tune that. I'm going to find the peg that that correlates with the string. And it's a little high, so I'm going to oh, 
and just went down to a C plus. I'm gonna bring it back up, tighten it up to, you wanna be very careful. Okay, now when I'm at a dark green, I've hit the D. Okay, so let's go down to the second string. That's a B, it's really close. I'm gonna loosen it a little bit, make it come down. And yeah, now we're at the dark green here. Okay, let's go to third string here. That's the one that's red. Um, I need to bring that down just a little bit. Oh, nope, up oh, actually. And basically you wanna tune it, find it, use really incremental twists, nothing crazy to get yourself to that dark green G here. Here we go, there we are. And then the fourth string is a D. I think we can. I'm gonna go up, get to that dark group. Uh, past it. There we are. So I just turned it off, um, but basically we have the open G. All right, so now the other part uh, to playing on the banjo is with your right hand, you want to choose either your index finger or your third finger. I like to use my third finger, but I actually think the majority of people like to use their index finger. And with claw hammer, you're, it's like knocking on the door, so you can actually just practice by just gently knocking on the drums right here. Okay, then you're going to stick out the finger that you're using. Now you can use a pick, or if you've got long enough fingernails, you can you can use that too. I have a bad habit of chewing my fingernails, so um, I have to use a pick. I think a lot of people actually end up using picks just in case they break their fingernails and things like that. But again, I'm using my third finger. You can use your index finger, and you just want to practice knocking downward and plucking downward into your string. And this is the first step into claw hammer. You're essentially creating a claw with your hand and you're hammering downwards. And then this fifth string, you can use your thumb. And you're just really just touching it. Long story short, the basic rhythm to claw hammer is Hammer down with your third or your index finger. Brush. Catch it with catch the top with your thumb. A lot of people will use the dum diddy um, rhythm to to practice this. So dum diddy dum diddy dum diddy dum diddy, and then you can practice with by moving down to the second string. Dum, diddy, dum, diddy, third string. Fourth string. First string again. Second, third, fourth. And you're playing the G chord all along. You're using the same open, open strings. You, you'll notice I'm not really playing playing anything with my fingers just yet, okay? But if you can practice just hammering, brush, catch with your thumb, dum diddy, dum diddy, dum diddy. You've got, I mean, you've got the basics, okay, as far as the strumming goes. So today we've just gone over how to tune, okay, and then the basics to claw hammer. Using your index or your third finger, you're going to hammer down on the string, dum, and then brush, diddy, and then you're going to end with your thumb. And eventually you can, you know, w next time we'll, we'll talk about fingering for different chords. This is the G chord open, right? Here's the C. Uh, and I believe this is uh, A7.
anyways, with these basic uh, with these basic chords, you can you can start with something as simple as twinkle. See if you can hear out hear the dum ditty. Once I got the hang of this, adding different other types of strokes, picks, um, you can even do slides later on, the, they'll come a little bit easier as far as ornamentations go. But uh, really, as far as claw hammer goes, choose your index or your third finger, practice knocking down into the drum, not downwards but into the drum, like you're knocking and, and, and that third or index finger is catching onto that string of yours, whichever one you want to hit. Then brush, catch it with your thumb, up. Okay, again. All right, and eventually you can start playing other songs like. Alright, I'll see you next time.